I travel a lot and I am very lucky and very fortunate to actually be able to do so. But with all the traveling that I've done in the past couple of years, I learned little tricks and hacks on how you can do it while on a budget. Ooh yeah. Hey guys, I'm Joy Kendi. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my ratchetness. If you are, oh hey, how you doing? So first things first, I'm just gonna break down things that you need before even thinking about traveling or seeing the world or whatever the hell it is that you wanna do. And number one, there are two items that you have to have. I don't know what I just dropped. But there are two items that you have to have before you travel. Number one, passport, duh. But just in case you don't have a passport, get a passport. Uh, mine's a Kenyan passport and I'm not gonna show you guys um, the actual details of the passport because it's my freaking passport. Uh, another thing that you have to have, a yellow fever card. Yellow fever cards are basically just cards proving that you have gotten the yellow fever shot. It costs anywhere between 700 shillings to 2,000 shillings depending on the clinic that you go to. And each of these yellow fever cards last up to 10 years before you have to get a new shot. Now how to travel on a budget or basically how I travel on a budget. I travel in two different ways. Number one, I'll either travel for free where I don't pay for anything at all. Or number two, I'll pay for everything myself. So. Let me break down to you how I travel for free. Um, how I travel for free is also divided into two sections. Both times are usually work related. Number one, one way that I will work for free is when I am doing blog stuff or social media things, um, either a travel agency, a hotel, a country. Sometimes usually the country just being like, hey, come visit our country and talk about our tourist attractions or whatever it is. Another way that I travel for free is during commercial work. Um, I do do a lot of commercial modeling. Okay, I don't want to say a lot. Lot, but like twice a year do um, some form of commercial modeling which a lot of times takes me out of the country so I've done shoots in India South Africa Malaysia Nigeria uh, I think oh yeah Thailand uh, I think I'm missing somewhere but that's another way that I get to travel for free now let me break down how I travel paying for things by myself how I travel using my own shmoney. And by the way, I've noticed that there's always some random dude or some like random chick who just like to hate when they see us like bloggers or whatever traveling where they'll write like little random comments like, oh, so which sugar daddy paid for this? If I am traveling and it does not work, I am paying for it 100% by myself. Me, myself, and I, and I'm talking about visas, uh, flights, accommodation, food, everything, I'm paying for it by myself for money that I have earned, that I have worked for. So, suck it. Um, so let me break down to you guys quick ways to travel on a budget. I have to write these down because I feel like I was going to miss so many things. So first rule if you're trying to travel on a budget is try to travel off pick season. Oh my gosh, if you are trying to be budget friendly, do not try to like go to New York during New Year's. That's stupid. You will spend so much money on flights, accommodation, food, transport. Just, you will spend so much money. And the way to tell off pick season is Google it. I don't know, I can't spoon feed you everything. Outside from traveling on off pick seasons, do your research before you actually decide where you're gonna go. There's some places where you can get a ticket that is relatively affordable, but then just surviving in that country is not affordable. You know what I'm saying? And there's some places where the flights are slightly on the higher end, but then living in that area during that week you're on vacation is so stupidly affordable that you're just like, okay. If you can, book all of your trips way in advance, especially if where you're trying to go is a high tourism area. If you're trying to go to Paris, do not try to book anything like just two weeks before the trip because the prices will escalate so much, you will be shocked versus if you just decided to book the trip maybe a year in advance. Instead of traveling to highly popular destinations, Start by going to areas that are more relatively unknown. They usually tend to be a lot more affordable than the popular places for obvious, obvious reasons. A perfect example that I can give for this is when people come to Kenya and they want to go to the coast. If you don't know anything about Kenya, the first thing that you want to do is go to Mombasa. But if you just decided to just go just a little bit 
down to Kalifi, you'll actually be spending way less money and have much cleaner beaches. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Uh, you need to figure out which countries require visas and which countries do not require visas. Because when you have to have a visa, it costs money. Okay, so if you can travel somewhere that does not have any visas, I highly suggest you do it because that's something that you don't have to pay for. For example, going to the US, a visa, depending on the exchange rate, can be anywhere between 16,000 shillings to 20,000 shillings, just depending on the exchange rate. Uh, going to South Africa is 5,000 shillings. By the way, Susan Wong did an amazing list of countries that don't require visas from Kenya, so I'm gonna put the link down below um, to, I think it was an article that she did for Capital, and you guys can check that out and look at the countries and see what you're into. So once you have your visa, you now need to find your flight. So different ways for you to cut costs when it comes to flights. A website that I absolutely am obsessed with using is Skyscanner. Actually, let me just show you guys how Skyscanner works. Oh, real quick. So for example, let's say I'm going, so I'm in Nairobi and let's say Josie. Let's go to Johannesburg and let's go on August 21st to the 26th. It's an adult. We want economy because we're not balling like that. You press search. And by the way, this is not sponsored by Skyscanner. I'm just showing you guys some stuff. Anyways, so when you pick your flights, um, the way Skyscanner works is that basically just sky... It basically just scans. Yeah. It basically just scans a bunch of websites and breaks down flights that are more affordable versus flights that are more expensive. So for example, if I go through this, um, so let's go to the cheapest. That's around 200, well, okay, so it's still scanning. So, so Rwanda Air is the cheapest one. So 257 pounds. So 257 pounds in Kenya shillings is approximately him. <coughs> is approximately 36,000 Kenya shillings. Um, that's actually really good. What? Oh, oh, is that a round trip though? Okay, now let's move on to accommodation. You have gotten your visa. So now let's move on to the next step. You have gotten your passport, you have your fever card, you have your visa, you've gotten your flight, you've arrived in the country. Now you need to have a place to stay. So you can either go for the hotel option, which by the way, let me just let you know right now, um, it's kind of sort of an expensive option. Don't get me wrong, I love me some hotels because I love just the fact that I don't have to make a bed. But, I'm also trying to save money, right? So the best thing that you want to do when it comes to accommodation is Airbnb. Let me tell you, Airbnb is life. So let me show you how Airbnb works. So Airbnb is basically a site that hooks you up with people who are willing to either rent out a room in their house, the entire house, an apartment, you decide whatever it is that you want to do. So let's say again, we're going to Johannesburg. So. I am now on airbnb.com. Let's type in Johannes Bag. It took a job big. Okay. So you choose that you want to go to Johannesburg. I can't remember the dates that I chose for the first thing for airlines. Let's just make some stuff up. So let's say August 20th to August 25th. Number of guests. Let's say there's two of us because you want to travel with friends because traveling with friends cuts down costs a lot, especially after flights. Everything within the country, if you have friends, you just split it down the middle. It cuts, oof, it's amazing. So let's say two friends. You can also choose children, all that stuff. I ain't got no kids, so. Okay, so I'm looking for homes. And so if you go to home type, you can decide whether you want a house, an entire apartment, a private room, whatever. I'm gonna, I always pick an entire place because I don't want the owner there at all. No shade, I just don't. And then you can also filter out by price. So I usually just pick anywhere between anything that's within the dark section because I'm not about that $1,000 a night vibe, right? So let's say if it's 
let's just say $100 can be our max because now if you're traveling with two people, that means you can split it down the middle where it's 5,000 shillings per person or $50 per person. So once you do that, you have all these options of amazing places that you can stay, that's a full apartment that you can just hang out, you and your girl, y'all can go out, you can come back, not be afraid that you're gonna wake anybody up because it's just y'all. Let me look at this one, this is actually really cute. Um, the only thing that when it comes to Airbnb is you really have to be careful the area that you are selecting Because sometimes you'll see a really cute place But you're actually not looking at the map and where they're located and in some countries like for example South Africa Johannesburg is very large so you'll think that you're like in the middle of like the city, but then you're literally an hour away from everything so you have to be very careful about the location of the place that you're selecting um, but let's just look at this one let's say Baby girl is trying to stay in which area is this? Randberg, right? So this is the apartment cute, right? And this one is around 4,000 shillings a night and it is one bedroom one bed one bath It can hold up to two guests dining room area on fleek Oh go it got a pool Oh, they're all about the decoration. They're all about the aesthetic. They even have a zebra in the back so you can be like, hey, I'm go Africa. They got cute little corners. They got a bathtub. Ooh, I go for bathtubs at all times. So basically, that's how Airbnb works. And then, so if we, if we look at the final cost, the final cost for five nights is... 20k divided by two that's 10k i don't think you understand how cheap that is when it comes to traveling and accommodation and all that and the best part about when you get these apartments is they all have kitchens so if you're also trying to cut costs i will highly suggest that you cook from home you don't eat out every single meal if you are gonna buy souvenirs you should never ever 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 buy from hotels or airports unless you're balling then just do you so traveling within the country, you can go the private route by renting a car. I'm 100% not doing that ever. I don't even drive in my own country. I'm not driving in your country. Um, you can also go the taxi route. I personally would never, ever, ever, ever take a taxi at a hotel because, oh my gosh, those things are hella expensive. But you can also use Uber or Taxify. Some countries only have Uber. Some countries have both Uber and Taxify. Just download the app and then figure it out when you get to that country. There's also public transportation. A lot of countries have very safe public transportation systems. Depending on where you're going, they could be subways, they could be trains as a public transportation, buses, matatus, I don't know, like you do you. So that is basically a breakdown of how it is that I travel on a budget and I do realize that there are many other ways to actually cut costs when it comes to traveling um, but I just want to just show you guys how I do it to each his own if you want to go to a hostel go to a hostel if you want to stay in a bougie 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 boutique hotel you do you boo boo to each his freaking own you know what I'm saying so yes thank you all for watching this video i will see you guys on friday when i finally post up my eyebrow tinting video if you follow me on instagram then you know what the hell i'm talking about if you don't then you don't know what the hell i'm talking about but just know there's gonna be an eyebrow tinting video so if that's what you're into stay tuned for friday yeah okay i'm done I'm so freaking hungry and I don't know how I'm gonna eat with this freaking lipstick. It's so dumb. Oh, do you guys know something that's really fun about YouTube? People look like they're all dressed and ready for life, but down below, they're wearing pajamas. It's a look, man. It's a look, it's a vibe. See you Friday. Cheers, love.